On May 24th, the day before Montana voters went to the polls, it looked like smooth sailing for Greg Gianforte to win the state's sole congressional seat. And then... I'm sick and tired of you guys. The last Jesus guy that came Christ. in here, you did the same thing. Gianforte still won the election by 6%, with about 37% of eligible voters casting their ballots before the incident occurred. Prior to running for office, he was well known around the state as a successful businessman, generous philanthropist, and strong Christian, which made his actions shocking to many who know him well. We were shocked. Uh, there are many political candidates in Montana who, if you heard a story like that, you wouldn't be surprised that it happened. But with Greg, we were all surprised because that, that's simply out of character for him. Greg, I've known for almost 20 years. That's just not what I've ever, ever seen of him. When Pastor Hughes first heard about the incident, he thought it was a hoax. And then he saw an email from Gianforte saying an unfortunate event took place and he wanted to talk. He called and he just, uh, his, I think one of his first comments was, Brian, uh, you know, as my pastor, I just want you to know I did not glorify God in my actions, but I sure hope to and long to glorify God in my response going forward. What do you think happened a couple weeks ago? I think what happened was after 22 months of campaigning for governor and then for congressman, I think the, the whole pressure, all of the feeling, you know, man, I've been drugged through the mud and all of that, I think he just snapped and he obviously regrets it immensely. Hugh says he's prayed with Gianforte a few times about how to best handle the situation. I really was confident that Greg would take responsibility, take ownership, and do whatever he had to do to make things right and, and uh, seek to honor the Lord yeah. in it and moving forward. He believes supporters should acknowledge what happened was unacceptable, but he can still be forgiven. Unfortunately, there were some in the state who, you know, on social media, who, who were almost excusing or justifying, saying, well, you know, the press does this, and the press, they got what they deserved. And, all, and so our elders felt like, no, we don't, we, don't want to be, we don't want anyone to assume that's our attitude toward it, nor is it Greg's. While there were reports of some early voters trying to change their vote, many still have confidence in Gianforte. In downtown Bozeman, Several people were reluctant to speak on camera, but say they still support him. And others say they have just as many questions of the media as they do of Gianforte. I'm not sure the uh, how much of it was made up and how much of it wasn't, you know. But, uh, you know, I feel like it was over-exaggerated by the press a tiny bit. I think these politicians and political figures get sort of harassed by the press sometimes, so it's not entirely shocking but still pretty, I mean, a shameful thing. There is a diminished effect of the media pursuing public figures as much as they do. Uh, fewer and fewer people are going to get involved. The jury's still out on whether he can move past this. I don't think Montana's going to approve of how he works in the House, and I don't think Montana approved of how he behaved the last week of his campaign. Gianforte has about 16 months to prove himself as a congressman and try to put this incident behind him before he's up for re-election in 2018. Reporting from Montana, Abigail Robertson, CBN News.